In October, Musk stated that Pepsi would receive the first semi-trucks from Tesla in December, but Coca-Cola has already begun making deliveries with battery-powered trucks, while Pepsi is preparing its mega-charger station to accommodate its first batch of Tesla semis on December 1. Having previously made fun of Elon Musk for promising to release the semi, Renault Trucks has now beaten Tesla by a week in the long-haul EV race. But in response, Elon Musk just did something that surprised Coca-Cola and Renault. What is this? Let's find out! Hello everyone, welcome back to Elon Musk Evolution, where we bring you the most recent news about Elon Musk and his multi-billion dollar companies, space news, and the latest science and technology. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss any of our amazing videos. Musk projected the manufacture of the Class 8 truck will begin in 2019, when he showed the prototype of the futuristic battery-powered semi in 2017. But the time frame has been repeatedly pushed back owing to part shortages. However, Musk disclosed his intentions to produce the truck in August. Although it would be eligible for a tax reduction of up to $40,000 under a U.S. subsidy program that was passed by the Senate, the vehicle is anticipated to cost $180,000. With a battery capacity of 500 kilowatt hours and new Tesla 4680 cells, the vehicle's reported energy usage is less than 2 kilowatt hours per mile, giving it a range of 300 to 500 miles, depending on the model. In an effort to cut fleet pollutants and fuel costs, PepsiCo booked 100 of Tesla's semi electric vehicles back in 2017. The senior executive at PepsiCo, Ramon LaGuarta, said that 10% of the company's gas emissions were related to transportation in an interview with CNBC last year. The company that makes Doritos chips and Mountain Dew soda previously stated that it intended to utilize the trucks to transport snacks and drinks to retailers as well as between manufacturing and distribution facilities. Meanwhile, the biggest soft drink corporation in the world, Coca-Cola, introduced its electric Renault trucks before Pepsi did with its Tesla Semi. A source claims that Pepsi is now putting up its mega charger station while Coca-Cola has already started deploying its new electric vehicle trucks in Belgium. The long-haul electric trucks from Tesla and Renault announced their arrival into the market for heavy-duty electric vehicles. Coca-Cola in Belgium obtained Renault trucks from the E-Tech DAD Y-Type, but most likely have a lower range than the Tesla Semi. The truck, according to Renault Trucks, was specifically designed to manage Coca-Cola's logistical data on deliveries. The vehicles provide comfort, safety, and energy efficiency to the drivers. According to the study, these features include a clear door on the passenger side, 360-degree camera systems to minimize blind spots, and loudspeakers to alert pedestrians and cyclists. The enterprise made fun of Tesla last month with a video that showed two employees installing a billboard that read, This is the future of trucking, before leaving in an electric Renault truck. Earlier Renault trucks had also made fun of Musk on Twitter. And now, let's take a look at how electric truck work. Why electric? Future fully electric truck models allow drivers more options to improve their experience while operating a vehicle. When switching to an electric truck, you won't have to give up performance or power. You may achieve incredibly quick torque and expert level hauling capabilities with electric truck models while emitting zero pollution. Would you like to know how an electric vehicle can produce more optimal torque? Most electric truck models use dual motors to more efficiently supply torque to all four wheels, improving overall performance. Automakers can construct a sturdy framework to protect the battery of an electric truck so that it can withstand off-road driving. Thanks to modern engineering advancements which provides ergonomic design and allow electric vehicle batteries to preserve cabin volume and cargo bed space. And let's dive deeper to the pros and cons of electric trucks. Obviously, the benefits include the following. Low noise means that operations can take place at night in residential areas without significantly disturbing resident sleep. This results in more efficient operations because trucks can operate outside of rush hour. Low air pollution. Compared to diesel or gasoline, the CO2 emissions are low if the batteries are recharged using renewable energy sources. No road charges are collected, whereas electric vehicles do not, diesel trucks do. Driver fatigue is reduced because there is less vibration and noise while driving. Theoretically, less expensive maintenance costs because electric trucks have fewer moving components and more dependable electric motors. But what's the drawbacks? Hidden environmental costs include the mining of resources for the batteries and the disposal of discarded batteries, even if there is no pollution from the burning of gasoline. 
If every truck were converted to electric charging, there would not be adequate power capacity, resulting in grid overload and infrastructural expenses. Substations as a whole would need to be installed or renovated, which would be expensive. It may cost up to $200,000 to install a 60-amp cable inside a company, which would be sufficient to simultaneously charge three trucks. A dedicated transformer that would typically power a suburb is required if a company with 30 trucks wants to charge them all overnight. There is still a lack of charging infrastructure. If a battery charge is necessary for a truck, the vehicle must return to base. In some parts of the nation, power outages are common which could seriously hamper the capacity to charge trucks. Considering that RUCs cover the additional damage heavy vehicles inflict to the road, the lack of RUCs is probably going to alter in the future. A higher initial expense is required. With that being said, which do you prefer now, an electric truck or an ICE truck? Let us know in the comment box below. And getting back to our featured topic, Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, tweeted that the new truck successfully completed a 500-mile trip while loaded to its maximum capacity during a test drive. Tesla is set to deliver its first all-electric semi-truck in four days. Tesla team just completed a 500-mile drive with a Tesla semi weighing in at 81,000 pounds, Musk wrote in his post. There are two versions of Tesla's semi, a 500-mile version that costs $180,000 and a 300-mile version that costs $150,000. Once authenticated, Tesla's recent drive should increase its visibility among businesses searching for a greener choice for shipping goods because rival manufacturers of electric semis have yet to achieve such a lengthy range. By 2025, Tesla wants to increase production in North America to about 50,000 cars yearly. And after this happened, Bill Gates received a special invitation from Elon Musk. Apparently, the doubts of his fellow billionaire have not been forgotten by Tesla's CEO. When the chance comes, he falls back on reminding them. The reason behind Musk's animosity toward his fellow billionaire Bill Gates is that the co-founder of Microsoft has frequently voiced his doubts about several ambitious projects of Tesla, the leading producer of luxury electric automobiles and the crown jewel of Musk's company. Musk voiced his displeasure in May due to Gates' $500 million short bet against Tesla. A bet that the stock price will drop is made while short-selling stock. Musk sent Gates a message saying, Sorry, but I cannot take your philanthropy on climate change seriously when you have a massive short position against Tesla, the company, doing the most to solve climate change. The two billionaires' debate about cooperating for shared causes came to an end at that point. The businessman afterwards followed up his criticism with a critical and scathing tweet directed at Gates. Bill Gates doubts on Tesla Semi. Musk only recently remembered Gates' skepticism of the viability and feasibility of long-haul electric trucks, which was the outcome of a barely covert attack on Tesla's 2017 pledge to build an electric semi-truck. Gates stated in a blog post in August 2020 that EVs excel at short-haul travel. That means they're great options for personal cars and even medium-duty vehicles like city buses and garbage trucks. But even if we develop cheap, long-range EVs that are powered by zero-carbon sources, Electrification isn't an option for many types of transportation. The problem is that batteries are big and heavy. The more weight you're trying to move, the more batteries you need to power the vehicle. But the more batteries you use, the more weight you add, and the more power you need," he continued. Without mentioning Tesla, Gates commended General Motors and Rivian in the same post for the development of electric vehicles and came to the following conclusion. Even with big breakthroughs in battery technology, electric vehicles will probably never be a practical solution for things like 18-wheelers, cargo ships, and passenger jets. Electricity works when you need to cover short distances, but we need a different solution for heavy long-haul vehicles. At the time, Musk retaliated, he has no clue. A little more than two years later, as Tesla is getting ready to deliver its first semi-truck, Musk used the chance to retaliate at Gates, his nemesis. He merely sent a special invitation to the billionaire to attend and drive the semi-truck himself to mark the event. On November 26, a member of Twitter wrote, I wonder what Bill Gates is saying about his comment in the past that Tesla semis will never happen. Next week, we'll see Tesla semi delivery. He can drive it himself if he wants, Musk responded. Musk enjoys provoking his enemies. In more than two years, Tesla hasn't released a new car until the semi. The Model Y SUV crossover, the first of which were delivered to customers in March 2020, marked the last new car the company has produced. 
With the help of Tesla Semi, the company will be able to break into a profitable new market at the time when the industry is struggling due to rising energy prices and ongoing supply chain disruptions. Tesla has a chance to win a sizable portion of the market. The automaker has orders from numerous businesses besides PepsiCo, such as Walmart and United Parcel Service. Besides Renault, Nikola Motors, which is currently working on the Trey Bev, the Trey FCEV, and the two FCEV semi truck versions, is one of the Tesla semi competitors. The bombastic personality of the Tesla CEO terrifies his detractors, but did you know that he has a hidden weakness? The reputation of Elon Musk as a maverick has grown. His flamboyant personality conveys to his supporters, and particularly to his rivals, the impression that he has no fear. When they attack him, they should anticipate a response from him, and he seldom ever plays defense. However, there is one subject on which the Techno King loses his composure and frequently takes the defensive. It appears as though he feels the need to defend himself or to make a point, and that issue is the question of who founded Tesla, the producer of electric vehicles that revolutionized the automotive industry and altered how consumers view cars today. He just proved that this subject is his weakness once more. It all began with a tweet from one of Musk's supporters denouncing an article that claimed Musk was not the founder of Tesla, but rather just a financier or investor. The article claims that Martin Eberhard and Mark Tarpenning are the true founders. Unsurprisingly, Musk responded right away. He kept trying to convince others that he was one of the company's founders. For the nth time, Elon Musk is justifying his involvement in the founding of Tesla. He has already carried it out in April. He even went so far as to claim that he is the true founder of Tesla by referencing the Nicholas Poussin painting Judgment of Solomon at the time. And that ends today's episode. Do you think Renault is better than Tesla Semi? And do you think Musk has the right to claim the true founder of Tesla? Let us know in the comment box below. Please subscribe and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Video.